from the Bealach Nava in the Scottish Highlands after 3,000 kilometers in 20 days. Welcome to the GCN Show. Welcome to the GCN Show. This week we are going to give you three reasons why you will one day be riding an e-bike. And two reasons why you went. We've got some great tech from the world's biggest bike show, Eurobike, some terrible tech in hack forward slash bodge and all of our other usual segments too. Yeah, we've also got to do a big welcome back to John Chocolate Voice Bevan, fresh from completing the egg route. John? That is one chocolate snore right there. John? John! This week, in the world of cycling, we were reminded that watching bikes is just great. Isn't it's just it? great. We'll kick off with this from Nikolai Rogatkin going absolutely nuts at the Red Bull District ride with a 1440. All the speed he can muster out of that row in the 1440, and he lands oh! it! Whoa! What? Oh, that was even smoother than last night. What? <laughs> Whoa. 1440 is four. I lost count, mate. Yeah. Uh, then there was also this, which was the latest round of the Red Hook Crit series. It lived up to its hardcore reputation. You remember that these bikes have no brakes and the inability to freewheel. And there was indeed a huge pileup on the closing stages of the men's race involving many of the favourites, including the rider that actually filmed this, Colin Strickland of Intelligentsia Racing, who was the series leader going into Barcelona. We'll have more from that later on the show. Uh, we also learned through my wanderings at Eurobike that it is inevitable that one day, fairly soon, we will all be riding e-bikes. Or will we? Well, reason number one why we will is the fact that the latest e-bikes, well, they look like this. I also particularly like the look of the new Focus Project Y. Yeah. More information will be out on that in an upcoming video. But that, like the old bear, is particularly light. Just 12 and a half kilograms, which is probably roughly what the top end road bikes were 30 years or so ago. Yeah, I got it. It does look good, mm. doesn't it? There is a problem though, I think, and that is using e-bikes for sporting reasons, okay? There had to be a hiccup. And the reason I say this is because I had a message on Facebook every weekend from a chap called Paul Taylor, and he just lost a KOM to a person who had admitted, openly admitted, to using an e-bike to do so. Ooh. Yeah, now I appreciate, you know, as problems go, it's probably relevant only to a minority of people, but leaving aside KOMs, what about just on a group ride? You can imagine e-bikes making a cycling club a little bit tense. And in fact, chain gangs, pace lines, whatever you want to call them, unworkable. Yeah, well, maybe we should have some unwritten rules about this. No, no, let's not do that. There has to be another way. Let's yeah. at least write them down this time. Reason number two then, transport. And this is the big one for me at least. Instead of thinking of an e-bike as a replacement to your beautifully simple road bike, Think of it as a replacement to your car. Or yeah. a quiet, easy, and convenient motorbike. Yeah, agreed. 100% in fact. I actually tried a Trek Super Commuter 8 yeah, when I was at a DT Swiss the other day. It was technically it was the personal bike of the vice president. <laughs> <laughs> hey, si, wait, 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 wait. He uses it to commute 30 kilometers to work each day and then 30 kilometers home. Some days he wears jeans and a hoodie and it takes him about 45 minutes. Other days he presses a little bit harder on the pedals arrives a couple of minutes earlier and has a great workout. And you think, wow, that just makes so much sense. Best of both worlds. Yeah. Does he know that you stole his bike? He does now. Oh dear. Go, go, go! I'm all right, Si, I'm all right. <laughs> Well, there are also some great e-bikes out there for carrying things around as well. For example, another one that I spotted at Eurobike from Turn. For some people, e-bikes are about going further and faster, but for most people, uh, they are really about convenience, and that is what Turn have turned their attention to with this new model uh, called the GSD, which apparently stands for Get Stuff Done. At least that's what I've been told to say. Uh, they are deeming this cargo capacity on a city footprint, and that's why they've got the city bike behind. Plenty of storage room on this thing, for your weekly shop or your weekly drinks there at the front. Are you sure that would last you a week? Oh yeah, there's more, there's more storage at the back of that bike as well, it was great. Uh. Now one of the downsides I found though is that e-bikes can set you back a pretty penny. This one, for example, from Bugatti will be, at a minimum, 
65,000 euros. Oh, what? And if you want the very top of the range one, double it, 130,000 euros. And what, and what exactly did you get for your extra 65,000 Well, euros? I did quiz the gentleman and all he could say was that it would be lighter. For example, some lighter cranks. A lighter crank, yeah. 65,000 sounds, euros. Sounds reasonable to me. This one though, from Cowboy, that was on TechCrunch very recently, sounds promising because one of their key development criteria is that it should have a very low price point. Yeah, well that is important, that is important. Mm. Right then, finally then, reason number three why it's almost inevitable that you will end up riding an e-bike and that is that they can just be great fun. In fact, we learnt in the GCN show just the other week that the majority of you use cycling as a means of escape. That is why you ride and so you could then imagine having a little bit of extra power at your disposal through having an e-bike just means it's easier to escape. You yeah. can escape more. You can just get more of what you want. Well, I was about to say, you and Matt got a tweet, didn't you? From we did. Stan we did indeed. From the weekend on exactly this subject. Uh, he wrote, Road Gospel Power Circuit from Hay on Y on a giant E plus one. Thanks again to you both. Incidentally, exactly the same bike that Matt used when he was racing you at the Dolomites recently. It wasn't much of a race, was it, at the end of the day? No. no. That Gospel Pass, actually, is a great ride here in the UK. It's also got another name. It's also yeah. called Lord Hereford's Knob. It's now time for Cycling Shorts. It can be a complicated and expensive task to close roads for races these days, and that is particularly relevant at the moment here in the UK. So perhaps then, the answer is racing on multi-storey car parks. We have seen it before in both London and Adelaide, but on the 26th of November, it will be coming to Christchurch in New Zealand, courtesy of the Car Park Cannonball. And I think this could take things up a level or two, or maybe even eight. It might be expensive though, if it's anything like paying for car parking around here, yeah. blocking out an entire eight-storey car park, I don't know what the entry fees would be. Anyway, riders will be competing uh, in two up races from the bottom to the top, and the event organisers say that the atmosphere will be heightened by live music and commentary throughout proceedings. How do you think we get on, mate? I think we get smashed. No, I mean in the race. Mate. Yeah, that's, that's what I meant. I've had at least eight mineral wards, mineral wards, mineral wards myself. Uh, right, news from the Vuelta. Really annoying and quite frankly awful news actually from the Vuelta. Team Aqua Blue Sport reported last week that their team bus had been vandalised set on fire basically which is pretty cruel yeah. particularly given that they're riding their first grand tour so something to be celebrated but the flip side is that a number of other teams offered to step in and help them out which is great not least Jack Janssen van Rensburg got it uh, who uh, tweeted this he said uh, basically they're welcome to come and use their team bus showers after the stage if they would like do you remember what the team bus showers are like on Dimension Data's bus we should have a look mate nice and spacious want to pick inside Oh, not bad. No, I'd take them up on that offer. Definitely. Yeah. Although they didn't need to because in the end they were helped out by a Portuguese continental team, LA Alamanos Metalusa, who donated their bus for the remainder of the Vuelta, which is a very cool gesture indeed. That is actually great, isn't it? That is great. Right now, it's not just the Vuelta on at the moment, uh, not by a long shot, I see, but the Tour of Britain is going on. Uh, it's got some great racing and a really stacked field, but actually, it seems like British cuisine is dividing the riders. It is. Yes, so for starters. Hey. Let's have a look at this tweet from Taylor Finney, who, as you can see, effectively decided to blame British cuisine for his first day performance. Controversial, Taylor. Yeah. And Alex Dowsett, meanwhile, tweeted this, saying that uh, he'd introduced his team, which is Mobistar, to uh, sticky toffee pudding Whoa. one evening. Yeah, British cuisine for the win, he says, with a strong arm thing. Yeah. Do you think Taylor's problems were just that he was too full? Yeah, quite possibly. He probably had porridge and a full English breakfast before stage one. <laughs> Up next, what does Chris Froome think about while he's on the toilet? Maybe he thinks about sticky toffee pudding whilst he's on the toilet. Who knows? Over to the ultra endurance world now and the race around Ireland took place last week and the winner was Nicole Reist. In doing so, she became the first female winner of the event and she was a full 12 hours ahead of her closest challenger and male category winner, Valerio Zamboni. Remarkable performance, mm. isn't it? She rode 2,212 kilometres in 112 hours. Just all you need to do is the math to know how much that must have hurt. 19 kilometres now. Yeah, sticking with the ultra endurance well, we should check back in with our good friend Mark Beaumont. He's had another very tough week 
facing a lot of very harsh headwinds. So if you do get a chance to send him your messages on social media, I'm sure he would appreciate that as he closes yeah. into the finish. Or indeed, uh, if you want to support him on the roadside, if you're lucky enough to be nearby. Yeah, don't just get a chance. Make the effort. Send him some love. That first sort of couple of days coming through Alaska were a mere warm-up to what was to come because in my mind I had it the other way around. Alaska was hilly and then it all got pretty straightforward. But in actual fact, when you're covering 240 odd miles a day, it's all pretty big, it's all pretty hilly. Physically, obviously, 16 hours a day on the bike is big in itself, but when you're putting in over 3,000 meters climbing back to back to back, it's funny because some days I was totally in the zone and dealt with it, and then the next day I would drop off and really struggle. And after the first week in stage three, I've lost about 60 miles. It's sometimes harder to deal with that. My support team are very, very good at reassuring me. Just keep thinking about the long game, thinking about the averages. But then for five days in a row to be not making target, it's hard to not start questioning myself on the bike. You know, I know the conditions are tough, but you know, it's also me sort of fading a bit. The emotional roller coaster can kind of happen regardless. Yeah, trust me, when you're 55, 56 days in, having ridden 13 odd thousand miles, you end up in some pretty weird mindsets. You just need to commit to not stopping. The Vuelta is into its last week now. Chris Froome and Team Sky seem to have everything pretty much under control. At the final rest day, he had over a minute's advantage over his nearest rival, who happened to be Vincenzo Nibli. And with a 40 km time trial, which will actually have been completed by the time this video goes live, he will likely, I say likely, have increased that margin quite significantly. Just a of death, just a death sigh. We had to try to predict something, didn't we? Miguel Angel Superman Lopez, though, has started to live up to his nickname, hasn't he? Yeah, a has second place on stage and two stage wins. He's propelled himself up to sixth place in the general classification on that rest day. But it's a bit of a shame that he lost some of that time in the early opening flat stages. Well, you say that, mate, but he is not going to be concerned at all because his attack, when he left Contador and Bardet on the climb to Sierra Nevada, earns him this week's Wattage Bazooka! Well done, Miguel. Yeah. Meanwhile, this week's viewer of Wattage Bazooka goes to Aryan Murali on the Palamalai climb in southern India, where this section it goes to 23%. Ooh. i tell you what, I don't know who was actually riding up that climb, but they deserve what is bazooka? Mm, they were flying. If you know someone that deserves it for next week, don't forget to get in touch on social media with the hashtag Wattage Bazooka. Now, the Dutch dominated proceedings at the Bulls Rental Ladies Tour. They filled all three spots on the final podium, but dominantly standing at the very top was Annemiek van Vluten. That's right. She led from the opening stage to the finish, having won the prologue time trial. She was pushed pretty hard, wasn't she, on that final, very long 155 kilometer stage. But ultimately, she did finish with a relatively comfortable margin of victory. She had 43 seconds over Anna van der Breggen. The Dutch are gonna be quite hard to beat in the women's race at the World Championship. so. Yeah. Right, the Tour of Britain also kicked off on Sunday, and Daniela Bonatti, the Italian from Mobistar, Seemed to have his hardest stage before the race even kicked off. Have a look at this for a travel day. Wow. An amazing use of emoticons. Well, probably the best I've ever seen. Yeah, I tell you then, I am concerned though that he took to Twitter sometime, presumably having got to his hotel at 11.30 in the evening, and that would have taken him a long time to craft that tweet. Yes, and that would have been 12.30, his normal time in Europe. Exactly. And uh, unsurprisingly, perhaps, he didn't feature no, in that fifth. first stage, really. Although, what a stage it was. One of the closest sprint finishes I think we've ever seen. Uh, they did eventually manage to pick Caleb Ewan out as the winner, uh, as those first three guys hit the yeah, line. they were very close. At the same time. Yeah. And we've literally just finished watching stage two, whilst filming the GCN show here, Edvard Bersenhagen crossed the line first, but it has to be said, he did fear ever so slightly in that final sprint, and we are speculating he may be relegated. Ever so slightly, Dan. It'd be like me starting to talk to you here, and then finishing off my piece of camera somewhere over here by the coffee machine, yeah. basically. You are disqualified, son. Don't come back. What do you mean? It's relegated to last position. Then. Right, we also mentioned earlier that the latest round of the Red Hook Crit has taken place over the last week. Round three in Barcelona. Ash Dubin won the women's race with a daring overtaking manoeuvre in the final corner. And we say daring because, to reiterate, these bikes have no brakes and no freewheel. Yeah. Although, to be fair, that is probably better than no brakes and a freewheel. <laughs> No, to be fair, I say daring. 
just taken to the start line. Definitely, yeah. Mm. Uh, the men's race was won by uh, David Van Erd of the Berlin-based 8-bar team. Oh, are they Matt's mates? Fixie mates? No, those are not Matt's fixie mates. Matt's got other fixie mates from the Schindelhauer team. Well, he out-sprinted Davide Vigano, and he used to ride for Team Sky. So that just goes to show you the kind of level these races are. OK, you'd be forgiven for thinking that you've had your fill of tech this week, but no, we've got some more for you. Tech of the week this week is sure to stir up the indoor training market. Wattbike have just launched a new product called the Atom. OK, so Wattbike has been around for a while now with their famous static bike, but they've updated this latest model to take advantage of smart technology. That's so that you can use it with the likes of Zwift or Trainer Road, for example, as well as linking up to your Strava. That's pretty cool. You can stay indoors, but people think maybe you've ridden outdoors. OK, so all of the best bits of the previous generation are still on this unit. So that's the power meter, which is accurate to plus or minus 2%, plus the power settings itself from 0 to 2000 watts. I think that's suitable for me. Uh, plus it looks great. What more can we say about that? So last week, Dan and I were actually at Eurobike, checking out loads of cool tech. For me, the best bit of tech I saw, oh, it's, a, it's a tough one, but it's probably the UFO chain drip from Ceramic Speed. Why? Keeps your chain nice and clean, it gives you a little bit of extra free speed. I'm liking that. Competition time now, we've got three great prizes for you from Control Tech, a company with a long history in the sport. I remember running one of their stems on my mountain bike in the mid 90s and they've made somewhat of a resurgence with some fantastic looking products. They have, so up for grabs, literally, we've got three handlebars. So Dan is modelling very well in fact, the Time Mania, which you'll notice has a titanium central section, unidirectional carbon drops. The idea being that it blends the properties of both those materials together in one handlebar, which is cool. And then there's this one, which is my favourite, the Cougar Carbon Air Handlebar. I do like the sound of that, Dan. Uh, now, it's compatible with the new DI2 junction box, which fits in uh, your bar end plug there, but it's also compatible with Control's Pure Cockpit system. So you'll notice there's a bunch of holes on the back here, so you can route your cables internally and even out through into Control Tech's own compatible stem and then out into their fork as well and from the fork straight into the frame, so no more external cables. Yeah, saw that at Eurobike, it looks very good indeed. Yeah. And finally, we have this, which is the EXL gravel bike specific carbon bar with flared drops and as you can see, quite a pronounced rise as well. Great for people like me who are older and want to slam stem still whilst remaining comfortable. As ever, if you would like to enter this competition, you can do so by following the link which is in the description below this video. And all that leaves us to say is good luck. Well, not only that, but make sure you enter the other competitions that we've got on the channel. Yeah, as well, we've got the lightweight unboxing, and we've also got the physique unboxing as well. So the links to those competitions are also in the description. That's a lot of chances yeah. to win. Hack forward slash bodge of the week now, did you get it right? I think so. We'll kick off with one from Sean Gannon. Now I've seen some carbon repair in my time, so Have you? I've never seen one like really? this. Not much actually. <laughs> uh, sellotape has been used to gaffer this all together. I would suggest that the owner doesn't ride that anymore. That is a bodge. Definitely, Definitely don't bodge. fix your bike with sellotape. Anywhere at all. Tell you what mate, if you want a rhino bike made out of a suit of armour, that's a hack right there. Look oh, at that, sent in by Daniel Burgess, spotted in central London. That is definitely a hack. Can I say something? You can. I don't want a rhino bike made out of a suit of armour. So, oh. there we go. This is a hack. I love this one. From Peter Dixon, he's used his dog lead as a bike lock on his roof rack so that he can go into the local petrol station. And then he shut it in the door, genius. Yeah, yes. Wrapped it round, shut it in the door. I mean, you know. Great A hack. All you need is a pair of scissors yeah, but to it, cut it, it loose. It might discourage someone, mightn't it? It would. For a few seconds. Yeah, fair play, uh, Peter. I think that's a great one. Uh, this one sent in by Connor Cola. He said it's a home built bike rack for his college dorm. Very looks pretty nice. nice. Yeah. Hack. Yeah, like that. <laughs> great. So you can invite plenty of people back to your dorm, Connor, I'm sure, with that work of art. Yeah, and then we have got this from Tommy Numella. Whoa. That's kind of like a bodged recumbent, isn't it? Saddle yeah. in the middle of the two wheels, pedals at the front. I'd imagine you'd do an endo pretty easily on yeah, that. No one's going back to his college dorm. Look at that, that's terrible. Uh, right, finally then, we've got this from uh, Lee from the Wind. Uh, I don't mm. even know, I mean, that's obviously a saddle, but I don't quite know how it's a saddle or why it's a saddle, Dan. Should we say that's a 
bodge. Well, it's finishing a bodge. Maybe it's maybe they've reinvented the seat and well, actually it's incredibly like comfortable. That and see if it is comfortable. I must admit. If you've got a saddle like this and you'd like to see CIRI <laughs> testing it out, please send it into the Global Cycling Network office. And if you've got any more hacks or budges, all you've got to do is use the hashtag GCNHack on Twitter, Facebook or Instagram. Keep them coming. It's time now for the weekly caption competition. Your chance to get your hands on a GCN water bottle. That's right. We'll give you a photo, you caption it, we choose the best ones. It's as simple as that. If you've not seen it before, this is how it works. This is last week's photo. And the winner, the winner of a GCN water bottle is Patrick Sheard, Vincenzo Nibali. Yeah, I'll give it to you, Patrick. If you write your address down and send it to us on Facebook, we will send it out. But that's got to be the end of these fist puns. I'm absolutely fed up with hearing you coming out of fish puns and seeing them in the comments and seeing messages on Facebook as well. I thought that's you were going to do enough. one last no, fish pun. No. Meanwhile, I, this week's caption photo is this one of Team JLT's Russ Downing at the recent tour of Britain. I shall start you off. That's definitely a swipe left. Some youngster at the office have said, I don't even know what it means. Anyway, if you've got a better caption, please leave it in the comment section down below. We shall choose a winner this time next week. Puns normally fare quite well. Before we get to what's coming up on the channel this week, let's take a quick second to just go through some of the belting comments that you've been leaving under our videos. As always, this one I particularly liked under your indoor training video from Eurobike. Uh, Jay Johnny, whose avatar looks like a very bronzed uh, person standing on a beach, has said, so how do you get a tan at the same time as training indoors? Top of his list of concerns, obviously, that. Isn't there any, like a pill you can take now to make you tan? Well, you could put your indoor trainer outdoors. Tell you what, mate, that's genius. <laughs> I, can't, I can't come back from that. Um, so I'm just going to change the subject. Uh, Porak Tobask uh, says, uh, under another Euro Eurobike videos, in fact, I've been kicked out. Uh, not because I've done anything wrong, you understand, but because day one of the show is actually now finished, disappointingly. Uh, at the same time, five people enter to visit Eurobike. Yeah, I think they were VIPs. Oh, were they? Okay, yes. special after hours. From the same point in that video, Pumpkin Seed put 957. My expression of why does the video end already? Well, I've got some very good news for you, Pumpkin Seed. There is more Eurobike stuff coming up on the channel this week, starting straight away, in fact on Wednesday where we will have weird and wonderful tech from Eurobike. We will also have another video that day, Zwift for Beginners. More Eurobike tech on Thursday. That day is going to be an e-bike special, so quite appropriate for today's GCN Yeah, show. a bit more detail. Yeah, and on the very same day, we've also got our latest Cycle Rivalries video. And then on Friday, it's Ask GC Anything. Yeah, Saturday, it's quite a monumental pro bike, actually. It'll be the last ever Alberto Contador pro bike, because yes, obviously, this is his retirement race, the Vuelta, and this is his retirement bike. A very beautiful bike from Trek, no less. And then on Sunday, we've got another unboxing, a great one this time. Do you think I can say what it is? I don't know. It's the new Watt bike. Ah, oh, you said it. I did say it. That's pretty cool, isn't it? And then Monday, maintenance Monday, I'll show you how to build a wheel. I built my first wheel. Yeah, that's a long video, that one, isn't it? It is. <laughs> Gnarly dude is what you say, I think, isn't it? Uh, yeah, I believe it is, actually. Not quite out there with Nikolai Rogatkin, but still. Two extremes in one GCN show. That's pretty good, isn't it? It is. Well, I'm afraid, though, that the GCN show is over for another week. If you've enjoyed it, please give it a thumbs up just down below. And if you haven't yet subscribed, you can do so right now by clicking on the globe. Yeah, and if you're after some more content now, do not worry. There's plenty for you out there, including a Power to Max factory tour. Basically, how not to make a power meter, because they asked me to do it. And and I failed miserably. That one's just down there. <laughs> or in the top corner, you can find my report from the latest indoor training tech at Eurobike, including a Wahoo product that simulates climbs. <laughs>